Welcome back. This is Sharon Vornholt. And if you remember in the last video, we talked about the differences. Um, you know, we talked about the probate process itself, the steps in the probate process, and a little bit about the executor and the administrator and what those differences are. So if you remember back collectively, the, each one of them can be called the personal representative. Now the executor is someone that was appointed by the deceased, they were named in the will to take care of the estate and settle it according to their wishes. So in the absence of a will, the, um, the court appoints someone called an administrator and they are the person then that takes care of all the details and takes care of, of settling the will and all of that. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about what exactly are the duties of the executor. You know, what, what, uh, what is the job, so to speak? What is it that they have to do? So first of all, and we're just going to call them the personal uh, representative. So that will be either the executor or the administrator, whichever it happens to be. The duties and responsibilities are identical. And remember that according to the law, they are bound by the law and you know the laws of the state and by the wishes of the deceased when there's a will. So this person would initiate the probate process. So they're the person that will contact the probate attorney or in some cases where the family decides to try to settle the estate themselves, they would be the one to go to court. But they would initiate the process at the local courthouse. So that's the first thing that they have to do. The next thing they have to do, one of the other things they have to do, and bear in mind that every, every state's process is similar, but it could be a little bit different. So there, once they have uh, initiated the probate process, then there is a process for notifying the beneficiaries or the heirs. You know, a lot of times if there's a probate attorney, they'll take care of this and they'll make sure the steps are done in exactly the right order. So um, if individual items, as we said, have been willed in the, uh, you know, in the, in, the, in the actual will, those will all be noted, you know, things like that. That whole uh, identification process happens. And of course, they're going to try to figure out if there is actually a will, if there seems to not be a will. So the executor, personal representative, they're gonna be responsible for notifying uh, these places like utility companies, banks, insurance companies, uh, anyone else that the deceased has had a relationship with. So look at their mail. If that were to happen to be you, you might find some clues on their computer, like uh, you have to notify credit card companies, uh, things like loans, uh, mortgages, any bills that you know are outstanding, uh, there's uh, a notice to creditors that will need to be published. Now, in many areas, it's something like uh, that you have to publish it in the paper for three consecutive weeks, and then the creditors have six months to come forward and say, uh, the deceased owes me this amount of money. But whatever your state is, there will be a procedure for that, and you just need to find out what the procedure is. Because if you don't follow it correctly, many times you have to start over, and then your timeline, like the, let's say it is six months, if you fail to do it uh, exactly according to the process, then you're going to have to start the process over, and you really don't want to do that. Um, executors have to take an inventory of the assets, so they're responsible for you know get putting a value on those or getting them appraised, whatever the case may be. Uh, for doing an accounting, so to speak, so they would be. Let's assume they didn't have a will then that the person, the personal representative would have to put together an inventory of the home, the bank accounts, um, thing, everything, you know, bills, things like that, and present them to the court. Now, hopefully you have a probate attorney to help you with this process because, you know, while you can do this, the family can do this themselves, most of the estates I've been involved with as an, as an investor, have gotten mucked up when the family has been the one trying to do it and save the cost of an attorney. Now, I know sometimes people are successful at doing it. Some people are better at following directions than others. But it, in almost every case, there's going to be a very definite process that you have to follow 
And if you mess it up, you're going to have to go back and correct those steps. So what that means as an investor is that it's going, if you write a contract, it's going to make the length of that contract longer. Now, in most cases, the contract goes off without a hitch. Certainly in Kentucky, it's just the same as writing any other contract. You just put the property under contract and go through the normal steps. Now, there are some states like California where they have a very different process. Um, I have investor friends in Oklahoma. If someone uh, passes away without a will, there's a different procedure for that. You know, sometimes you'll make your offer and then you have to go to court and then someone else gets the opportunity to come in and beat your offer. So you don't need to be a legal expert to work in the field of probates, but you do need to have a legal expert on your team, aka an attorney. Uh, my closing attorney acts as that person so that when any kind of a roadblock comes up, they know how to handle it. You, once again, you do not need to be uh, a legal whiz. You do not need to know all the legalities of probate. You do need to have someone on your team that knows about it. And you need to have a general idea of how all of this works. It will help you sidestep a whole lot of landmines and uh, make, you know, just make working with probate so much easier. I love probates. They're off-market deals. Uh, the, the sellers always, the, you know, they always want to sell the house. So that's the great thing about probates. So uh, let me know if you have any questions. Be sure and check out my brand new probate course. You can check it out at probateinvestingcourse.com. It's opening in May 2018. So it will be a closed, uh, closed launch. Uh, you, that, what that means is that we'll open, the, we'll open it up and then we'll close it so that we can take good care of the people that are in the course. So you, there will be a couple of options. You'll have an opportunity to, to buy the course and be part of a Q&A group, or you can join the boardroom, which is what I highly recommend that you do. That's an interactive place where we'll have Zoom meetings. And, um, but as always, uh, this training is here for you. It's yours free without any strings. And let me know if you have any questions and I'll be happy to get those answered. So this is Sharon Bornholt and look for your third video coming your way real soon.